Time now for the next thrilling instalment of our adventure serial, The Curse of the Flying Wombat. Tim Brown, Windsor, and his friends were greeting Lady Constance the Coverlet when Casey O'Sullivan and Masha Wilkins cut down the mast to the flying wombat. Look out the mast! It's going to fall on top of us! (laughs) 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 Missed! (laughs) In the confusion, the villains made their getaway, but in their haste, they left behind them an important clue. Kind of stoat. Six letters. It could lead us to the hiding place, the green eye, the little yellow god. In which case, Casey O'Sullivan and his henchman, Masha Wilkins, have been wasting their time. And Maisie Robinson was telling the truth, in spite of the pig. So, the Eskimo ambassador to Hong Kong is really Brian Borrow, disguised as the Duc d'Orfeve, and not Horace Featherman, as we first thought. And the place on the map, marked with a cross, has nothing to do with Marty, son of Wonder Horse, at all. What blind, blind fools we've been. It all fits in, don't you see? It all falls into place. <laughs> don't you see? Don't you see? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> still one thing that bothers me. What's that? Indigestion. Excuse me, Captain Cleese. What was that? It's me, Grimbling. Why? I've got indigestion, too. Well, what is it, Grimbling? It's Lady Constance to cover it. She says she would like you to come and see her below. I've already seen it. <laughs> but no matter, I shall come at once. Come in! It is I, your ladyship. Oh, what do you mean by bursting into a lady's boudoir unannounced? Uh, nothing. Oh, pretty. <laughs> Come over here and sit on my knee where I can see you better. I would rather stand. Very well. Come and stand on my knee. <laughs> Madam, I must tell you that I am a married man. So is my last husband. Now, Captain, you and I must have a little chat about something very important. <laughs> something very important in I'm sorry, could you speak up a little? (laughs) While the captain and Lady Constance talk earnestly below decks, Fiona Rabbit Vacuum, disguised as Jim Ladd, the cabin boy, takes a popular novel from the ship's library and carries it up to the crow's nest. Yes, this is where I take up the story. (laughs) As I stood on the stern, Tim whispered in my ear. You're standing on my stern. (laughs) Oh, pity me. I am an unhappy maiden in distress. Well, take it off then. I can't. Why not? For fear of disgust. Disgust? Yes, disgust of wind. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, Tim, talk to me as you used to when we first met. Oh, all right. Uh... Oh, Tim, you're so manly. Yes. You're so handsome. Yes, yes. Devilishly good looking, so rugged, so strong. Oh, yes. You're so devil may care, you're so brave. Yes. You're wonderful. Did you write this? Yes. <laughs> And I'm so plain, yes. ugly, yes. characterless and boring. Yes. Did you write that too? Yes. I never could write for women. Oh, Fiona, look up there at that seagull flying high in the air, free from all cares and woes, swooping gracefully over the water, climbing up, up higher and higher, wheeling into the wind as carefree as could be. Got it. <laughs> Wonderful. Fiona. <laughs> What's that? My hand. No, I thought I heard something. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? No, we've gone about as far as we can on radio. <laughs> Excuse I, sir, but was it you who just shot that albatross with a rifle? Oh, I thought it was a seagull. No, sir, it was a rifle. Ah, a, a seagull don't make so much noise when it's fired. <laughs> I'm sorry, I seem to have got a fit of the giggle. <laughs> that night, as the moon swings high over the yard arm, all is silent. Sorry. <laughs> Suddenly, the peace is shattered by a cry for help. Help! It is the voice of a woman. Oh. <laughs> the sound brings Tim Brown Windsor from his bunk. What was that? It was me saying the sound brings Tim Brown Windsor from his bunk. <laughs> Kidnapped. I'm being kidnapped! Quick, Tim, 
quickly. She's... She's... She's being kidnapped. In an instant, the ship was pandemonium. The captain immediately dispatched Grimbling. Grimbling, take that. Oh, 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 you're too kind, sir. Oh, uh, eek, crumple, crumple, slump. He's dead. I say, was that meant to happen? I don't know. Hey, wait a moment, he's got something on the next page. Look, if you'd only have the manners to let me finish what I was saying... The captain immediately dispatched Grimbling to see what was happening. Oh, how boring. <laughs> and before you could say popple cattle, popple, popple. Anyway, he was back jolly soon. <laughs> oh, sh 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 sir, sir, there's, there's three enormous kangaroos down in the hole, sir. And they're all wearing bowler hats and cami knickers uh, and singing selections from Gilbert and Sullivan and abducting Jim Lad. Yes. Grimbling, you're lying again. No, sir, I'm standing. <laughs> Very small, sir. <laughs> Jim Loud is in mortal danger. Quickly, after the blackguard! After them! After them! After them! Who is the mysterious villain who is abducting Fiona Thingboot Wallop? Who can save her now? Oh, what? Is this the end? How does Humphrey Barkley manage to look so young? Do you dare to listen to next week's exciting episode? Do the BBC dare to broadcast it? <laughs>